Hello everyone, Vito's a pretty back again with another What's On Deck. <clears throat> and unfortunately, I'm not in the greatest of spirits because I just got laid off from work. Not a good thing, but hopefully uh, it'll be only temporarily. For once, I actually get laid off and I kind of hope I get called back. <clears throat> because I do like the job. But anyways, let's move on to playing cards. First of all, Pitman playing cards from the Elephant Playing Cards, has funded, just made it over the funding line, um, it should not have any problems. However, getting to $30,000 for the Shadow Edition, I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'm a little bit skeptical of that happening. Not that I don't want it to happen. There it is right there. It's just, it was difficult to reach $20,000. So I don't know. We'll see. They still got time. Hopefully they'll make it there. <clears throat> Moving along. Black Mint playing cards from 52 cards. Extremely well funded. They are on the verge of $100,000. Tells me they've got a lot of followers. 1800, almost 1800 backwards right now. 71 hours to go if you haven't checked it out. Now is the time. They have also added on a new deck that they hit the stretch goal for. <clears throat> that was the final stretch goal at $90,000, which was this, the Raspberry Mint deck. It's a red version. And again, same as the other one, marked and everything. So, um, <clears throat> pretty cool. Definitely check it out if you like it. Next up, Siren's deck. OCM playing cards from Jian Hao Kai. This is a relaunch of his original concept. Um, 55% funded, 36 days to go, USB-C printed, two decks, <clears throat> um, and they're pretty cool. <clears throat> Since it is in Canadian, and it's $70 Canadian for one, and that's the early bird, um, unfortunately I missed the uh, early bird for two decks. There's two versions, the Diamond Siren Edition and the Agent Siren Edition. It is, like I said, it's in Canadian, so that's a lot less money than what it looks like for Americans and Brits and Europeans, so check it out. Special metallic stock, as you can see. Metallic inks, metallic stock, whatever it is. Actually, the Diamond Edition is going to be printed with Expert Planko Company's new starter stock, which has got a metallic look to it. <clears throat> and there is a possibility to get it bumped up to a luxury grade white gold metallic stardust cardstock which is what you see that's a uh, prototype printed on that <clears throat> here you see the tuck box for the diamond edition artwork on the inside and everything the jokers it's a lot going on there, but it's pretty cool. Not a big fan of having a black joker and a white deck, but it is just one card. And wouldn't be the first time. Here you see the uh, cards. They've got <clears throat> kind of a green for the clubs and blue for the spades. Hearts and diamonds are both kind of a red and, or an orange and a red. Pretty cool artwork, mermaid inspired, as you can see. For the court cards. <clears throat> it seems like the jacks are women as well. As the queens. But the kings appear to be men. <clears throat> and then you see the number cards. There's actually an animation here in the corner. Of the fish and the mermaid. And some music to play in. It's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, it. Looks like it's only in the number cards. And you can see the pips in there as well. Pretty cool. Here you see the back design. Definitely interesting <clears throat> and unique. Number cards, very cool, very nice. Again, I do think it would have been nice if they're going to do four colors to make the diamond stand out a little bit more from the hearts. But they do, but it's subtle. But it's, I guess it's fine. But I do like them. There's a lot going on in the faces. A little bit going on there. It's pretty cool though. And then this is the Ancient Edition, a bit of a different back design, one way, which does suck a little bit, but still nice artwork. 
and it got more of a dirtier look to the faces, I guess. A darker color. So that is that. I like it. It's doing pretty good so far. So we'll see what happens. Next up, Carbon Fiber Playing Cards Relaunch from Jeff. It is pretty funded, uh, pretty well funded right now. 87% or so with five days to go. Uh, it's going to make it. It's fine if you don't mind spending $35 for... Actually, it's $35 for <clears throat> the bicycle decks if you haven't gotten them yet. Apparently, they're still trying to sell them. Because that's pretty uh, ridiculous. Right now. They're still selling them. A mini deck is $55. The regular decks are $90 and $95. <clears throat> pretty expensive. But they're, somehow, they've gotten tons of funding this time around. 145 backers, I don't really understand that. Um, I want to point out, mention that a little bit of an unethical thing happened recently. The, there was the Saladies restoration project from Home Run Games from Michael Scott. <clears throat> and it received a last minute $5,000 boost from Jeff, who's also from Home Run Games, which is kind of against Kickstarter rules. Um, and just unethical, the project had less than one hour left to fund, and all of a sudden, it, and, and it was only at like 64% funded or something like that, 84% funded, I think it was actually, and, you know, it was 3000 or $4,000 short, and all of a sudden, it funds, last minute funding. To me, that is BS. If it's going to fail, then it should be let to fail. If it doesn't have the support, it doesn't have the support. To have retailers or buddies come in last minute and make sure it funds is just against the whole spirit of crowdfunding. Either it gets funded by the backers by the, through the crowdfunding or it doesn't. If it's a failure, it's a failure. That's all I can say. Well, it, it's against the whole spirit, and it's an abuse of the system to do it, in my opinion. And I just want people to think about where their money is going about when they're giving this guy money on this project. When he took $5,000 and put it in another project, that's where your money could be going. <clears throat> Although they assure me that's not the case. <clears throat> um, next up. Whoops. It's not... Oh, I forgot to mention. Sexual content warning. I apologize. I nudity. Hannah Fuda deck. There's uh, some sexuality and nudity in this one. It's not going to happen at this rate. It's 2% funded. 25 days to go. Massive $20,000 goal. Prices are a little bit up there. It's $20 for one deck. We either you can get a regular deck or a mini deck. And apparently there's low shipping in uh, all over the place, really. There's two decks. There's the Hanafuda mini size deck and then the Fusion standard poker size deck, which uh, is a Hanafuda deck with poker indexes and apparently a whole bunch of other indexes. Please tell me that's not a penis in the index. <laughs> I'm thinking it's not. But anyways, what a Hanafuda deck is, is an Asian style deck popular in Japan and Hawaii and a few other countries. Basically, there was a point in time where poker and playing cards was prohibited. So, they decided to make these artistic decks with flowers instead and use those. And then they made them mini deck size so that they can easily hide them in the hands. And, oh, no, we're not doing anything wrong. We're not gambling. We're not using playing cards. And it worked. <laughs> so, uh, they've taken the hand of food idea and added indexes to them for... Uh, poker players and um, I think that's okay also actually what it is is a pine not a penis <laughs> um, you can never know for sure but basically every month has a different flower which is basically the value if you will <clears throat> and you see the court cards and everything the aces have the artwork on them 
They're definitely interesting. I definitely had some interest in it. Not because of the sexuality, but because it's, I had a food deck. I don't have one, and it's poker style. But since I'm not working, and since it's not going to fund, it's a pass. Next up, 52 fan frames from Mike and Steve. Uh, Grease Talile, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, AKA Collectible Playing Cards, Father and Son. It's relaunched. It's not doing very well at all, unfortunately. 5% <clears throat> funded 29 days to go. They've added something to make it a little more interesting. Uh, this $6 pledge just still doesn't make sense to me. It's an extra backdrop color for your fan frame. Well, how could you have that as an extra color if you have to pledge for that separately? And shouldn't it be an add-on? That's what I think anyways. Right now it's $60 for one fan frame and you get a free bicycle pinup deck. <clears throat> $120 you get two frames and a free pinup deck. $180 for free, etc, etc. $300 you get all five and a free deck. So they decided to add a free deck in there, which is fine. Something they can do. I'm not sure why that specific deck. <clears throat> But that's the one. So check it out if you're interested. It's still pretty high at $10,000 goal, which I don't understand why it's so high. If they wanted to fund, they should have made it a lower goal. Um, next up, Russ and Folk Art from Natalia Silva has funded. This right here is why it funded specifically, because it was it was going to fund, it said how it probably was going to fund with 17 days to go. It was more than likely that it was going to fund. However, it was only at like 84 or 85% funded and was slowly getting there. They decided to add on this special collector's edition deck and that put them over the top. It launched yesterday. It was like, I'll tell you how much money it was. <clears throat> Only 75 being produced of this collector's edition. It has the Russian writing, Russian words for collector's edition. High gloss and printing on the cards and on the top case from NPC. <clears throat> Custom seal, signed in number decks. Also comes in a V2 carat card case, which is apparently optional. Although, if you're going to pay that much money, you might as well get the carry case. Actually, it's only $10 more worth the case, which um, to me is, I don't understand. Uh, it's $60 for one deck without the carry case, $70 with the carry case. I thought the carry case was a lot more expensive than that. It just it seems like it's overly expensive for the deck of cards. I know it's a limited edition deck. And as a collector, I would love to get it myself, but not at those prices, especially when you factor in the exchange rates. Because I'm pretty sure this is in American uh, currency on this project. Yes, because it's in Los Angeles, California. Even though she's, I thought she was Canadian. Actually, I'd probably run with that. But anyways, um, <clears throat> pretty nice artwork. It's different than the other one, deck. I like the colors, I like the back design. I would love to get it. I'm pretty sure it's sold out by now. And it's just, it's too expensive. It cost me like $100 Canadian if I was going to get it. And not that I don't want to get or anything like that, but I mean, they say this is a collector's edition, it's for collectors, but it's only for collectors who have a lot of money and or who are willing to throw a lot of money at all these people and this is what is hurting a lot of projects on Kickstarter right now because people are throwing a lot of money at certain projects and then other projects are not getting any money. And maybe it's not, it's probably not that fair. <clears throat> and you know, I like that, I'd like to, you know, take into consideration with the high price that there is the carrot card case included, but they decided to make it cheaper without the card case. Um, so I don't know. <clears throat> we'll see. I might still get it if possible. Moving along, 
There's this, World War II Aviation Spotted Guards from Aaron Shitleff. That's his first project. He hasn't backed any before. It's not doing too well. It's 11% funded or so. 22 days to go. Uh, $10,000 goal. It's a pretty massive goal. These are going to be plastic playing cards, which does not usually go well with collectors. And it's not really a deck that's good for poker playing, so he's kind of mixed up. Plastic decks do well with poker players, but they usually don't do well on Kickstarter. And then when you're making a deck that's more for collectors, they don't like plastic playing cards. And I do not like that back design. It's a horrible back design, in my opinion. I mean, this guy, it even says on there, Aaron, you know, shirtlift design on the back design. And it says USA down there as well. It's a, a very bad one-way back design. <clears throat> a very simple back design. And it's kind of like, you know, if you are a designer and you're advertising that, why don't you actually design something? I mean, this looks like something that took two minutes on a computer to create for the back design. The faces are obviously just basically, for the most part, copy and paste it off vintage decks. And, and he calls himself a designer. Hello? Go look at a Jackson Robinson deck. Or a Jody Eklund deck. There is a designer. The top case is nice on this one. It, it It's not bad. It's not nice. But it's not bad. But that's about it. And it's plastic playing cards. It's just a major turn off. Um, and it's not going to happen. Next up. Nick's deck. This is from a YouTuber. 13 year old YouTuber. Matthew Davis. Uh, who is in Nick's Magic on YouTube. Obviously he's a fan of the Verts. Just looking at his logo. Here you see the back design, it's really the only good side I can get on this video. You can check out more here on the project on Indiegogo or on his channel, The Nick's Magic. It is a pretty low goal, 500 euros. It's 31% funded with six backers. And it's probably, it may get funded, probably won't get funded because it's a pretty low goal. But at the same time, it's Indiegogo, which is usually no goal for playing cards. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I may be doing a review on this, we'll see. To be printed by NBC, that's all you need to see is the back design because apparently it just comes in a clear plastic case with generic faces. And there's no other images anyway. There is goals, 4,000 euros to be printed by USB-C. Infinity, <laughs> yeah, infinity euro, that's a stretch goal. That's a good stretch goal there. Um... 510 euros custom seal, which I don't know how that works with a plastic case. 600 euros, four uncut seats. Wow, only four. <clears throat> um, keep in mind, it is a 13 year old. It is sipping from Paris, France, Paris, and very simplistic. The back design reminds me of a kind of a recolored, simplified. Um, were glass backs deck that Simon Bruno did before. Probably inspired by that. It's an okay back design. Uh, it's not overly glamorous. And then, not a big fan of the fact that it has just generic faces. It would do much better if there was at least a custom ace in Jokers. But um, it is what it is. Go check it out if you like it. Stay tuned for non Kickstarter stuff. Let's continue. Let's talk about some other stuff. A little more Kickstarter, a little more uh, non-Kickstarter stuff. I can get some of these to work. I want to mention this one. This is launching tomorrow on Kickstarter. The Tele ad from Passion Playing Cards. Make sure you get your wallets ready. <laughs> it looks very nice. Uh, I do have a review on the prototype, which I forgot to mention. I forgot to make public yesterday i'll make it public today oh check this out another deck the alfred very nice <clears throat> three different decks coming for this project two available off the bat the dur is locked so uh pretty cool <clears throat> next up uh japanese scrolls this is coming later this week march the 4th to kickstarter from 
Emmanuel Manuel Voltiera. Uh, I'll have to find the rest of that thread. Uh, then there's this, a Gemini from Stockholm 17, Lorenzo Gagliotti. Lorenzo Gaziati, sorry, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, check this out, some of the artwork is done. I don't know when it's launching, but sometime this year. Massive pips, those are like the biggest pips I've ever seen on a deck of cards. But it's cool, I like it, I like the court cards. Very nicely done. At this rate, it should be launching in, you know, matter of time. Here you see the top case. That's that. A uh, quick update on the Mana Sybil playing cards. Eric Mana has finally, finally posted an update. Um, he says things were very ugly between him and his fulfillment in Niagara. And they weren't even communicating for a while. And just a lot of verbal fisticuffs. <laughs> and then he's also talking about how the exchange rate is hurting him. I know... That for sure, because I'm also Canadian, and as he is, and it's really bad exchange rate right now. It's hurting a lot of Canadian businesses, and also saying that he's been having a lot of personal issues. Gee, I haven't heard that before from any Kickstarters. Oh, wait, I've heard that from pretty much every Kickstarter who is screwed backwards. <laughs> I am glad that he's finally communicated and posted an update, but I'm just hearing a lot more of the same blah, 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 that I've heard from a lot of other Kickstarter creators who have screwed over backwards. And he says he has not abandoned it. He's trying to work on it. It's just, it's just costing him a lot more money and all that stuff. So hopefully we'll see something from that. And he decided, you know, to get the buskers out of the way. That's why people have been getting the buskers playing cards. And he did that through another fulfillment in Ohio, I think it was. Um, so we'll see what happens. Next up. Bicycle Voodoo coming soon from apparently from Noah Whipple. No Noah Whippy, I should say, not Whipple. Um not a big fan of the back design and being a one way and just kinda of weird. But it's I guess it's a voodoo doll, it's supposed to be one way. And then the faces, they look pretty nice so far. No court cards, but the Ace of Spades is pretty cool, and the the pips are completely custom and everything. He did previously do this one, the Bicycle Coffin Fodder Deck, a couple of years ago, which you can see a review on my channel. Apparently, he also has another Kickstarter uh, deck that he's going to be doing soon, but no info, not really a whole lot of info on that. Um, Conjuring Arts released a new Superior Brand deck the other day. It's... Uh, <clears throat> Currently listed at $9.95 instead of $14.95. You say five bucks, yay. It's a red version, same as their previous classic backs, except that it's a superior brand now. And it is marked. It's called the Readers. <clears throat> Not too surprised to see this because I did see this in a uh, magic kit from uh, a magician. I forget which one. Not too long ago. A British magician, that's for sure. <clears throat> Speaking of which, sadly, uh, Paul Daniels has been uh, diagnosed with having an incurable brain tumor. Sad to hear. Obviously, his days are numbered, which is unfortunate because he's one of my favorite, all-time favorite magicians. Um, and there's this coming this Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern. They are doing their first release of White Gold Monarchs at Fury 11 for 12 hours only. If you order 12 or more, you get a free Gold Monarchs included. I'm definitely, I'm really tired of these. Buy 12, get one free. Because it's just a lazy ass way of getting people to buy more decks from you. <clears throat> but um, here we are. In case anyone's wanting to see White Monarch V2 edition, more than likely. Um... It's there if anyone's interested. You can get the tomorrow. Then there's this from SovereignPlayingCards.com. A new DMC Elite Mark deck. It looks pretty much the same as the original black and gold, except that now it's Elites. Hopefully it's got a better finish because the previous one was not the best finish. But I do like the marking system to use on it. It's just the finish was not very good at all. 
And finally, white tally holes from Penguin Magic, now available. I don't know how long they'll be available. They'll probably sell pretty quickly. They are just white tally holes. There's a fan back and a circle back. They did put, what you see on the tuck case is not ink. Everything you see in the tuck case is black foil, which is pretty nice, pretty interesting. Obviously, many people say, oh, well, it does not compare at all to the black diamond tally holes from Jackson Robinson. But who cares? It's tally holes. And they're standard tally holes, not some souped up customized version. It's just standard classic tally holes. And they will sell. <laughs> That's for sure. <clears throat> and Cardistry Heroes coming this week from DeVoe, World Card Experts. They released more pictures. It's very colorful, as expected, with all four colors. Um, unfortunately, the back design just reminds me of the original Cardistry deck, Bicycle Cardistry deck, except that it's got four colors in the center, which some people are pointing out is very similar to... Well, it's not on here, but the Microsoft logo, <laughs> as you can see. Um, I would have preferred to have seen... If they're going to make it a one-way back design, and they want to have four different fanning, but not, why not have all four colors in the four quarters? You know, that, that would make a little more sense <clears throat> than just in the center. But they look pretty cool. I like the faces, a variety of colors. Each suit has a different color. Um, it's pretty cool. Coming this week sometime, I don't know when exactly. But I think it's pretty cool. And, oh, I just got an email from Art of Play. They are now offering FedEx shipping for, especially for international customers. Faster shipping with tracking as well. That's an issue I've had with Canada Post recently. They don't seem to track anything except for from the U.S. and Canada. Nothing from Asia. And, uh, <clears throat> it is what it is. Obviously, it's not going to be super cheap. But it is good for international customers who want to have tracking and faster shipping and a little bit more security, peace of mind, that sort of thing. Um, let's see if there's anything else to talk about. <clears throat> of course, coming soon will be a uh, deck from Caroline Raven. I know the Wasteland playing cards from Jackson Robinson are now shipping. One more thing I wanted to talk about, I wanted to address, is the Black Club from Illusionist, which I, I'm no longer a member. I let my subscription die. <laughs> um, and I think I mentioned the Bicycle Utopia that's coming soon. Don't know when exactly. I just wanted to mention that. As far as the Black Club is concerned, for some reason, they are not currently selling it. I don't know why that is. I don't know if they're making some changes, if they're not doing it anymore. Uh, I did get some feedback regarding it from Geraint, uh, from Illusionist, but apparently it's the weekend and he's busy and he was on his phone, so he couldn't post a response, but we should get a response. I should be getting a response from that. Like tomorrow, I'll let you know next week what's up with the Black Club. I really don't care if it's gone, <laughs> because it's too expensive and it just doesn't seem worthwhile. And a lot of people have cancelled. So this is the Japanese scrolls from Emmanuel Voltaire. I wanted to show you that. Coming soon to Kickstarter. Uh, March 4th, I think I said it was. Here's the Aztec Codex. You'll be able to get some in the project. While quantities remain, they have a small amount available. And probably the Egyptian glyphs as well. It's this one right here is the Egyptian glyphs. Japanese scrolls right here. Image is not showing up. Well, anyways, I'll show it to you next week. And oh, here's the Utopia and the updates. Nothing updated yet, I guess. But it's coming soon. That is that for this week, though. I'll keep you posted on some stuff. I'll see you next time with more.
Chao.